Once upon a time, at the foot of Mount Chofuku in Akita Prefecture, Japan, there was a small village. It was said that a terrifying witch called Yamamba lived on Mount Chofuku. On a moonlit night during the annual Harvest Moon Festival, while the villagers were enjoying the moon viewing, suddenly the sky darkened, and a fearsome voice echoed from Mount Chofuku. Yamamba of Mount Chofuku has given birth to a child. Bring me rice cakes as an offering. If you don't come, I will devour both humans and horses. The villagers were astonished. They quickly gathered their rice and hurriedly made celebratory rice cakes. However, everyone was too scared to deliver the rice cakes to Yamamba on Mount Chofuku. You should go. No way. I have a wife and children. I don't want to. Then who should go? I know. What about Kamayasu and Genroku? They are always boasting about their strength. Send them. So, Kamayasu and Genroku were called upon. But they refused, saying, we can take the rice cakes but we don't know the way. We can't bring them to an unfamiliar place. At that moment, the eldest villager, Ubanba, stepped forward and said, I know the way. When I was a child, I saw Yamamba on Mount Chofuku. I will guide you. In this situation, Kamiyasu and Genroku had no choice. Reluctantly, they took the rice cakes and followed behind Ubanba as they climbed Mount Chofuku. As the three of them traversed the mountain path, a warm breeze blew upon them. Kamiyasu asked, Ubanba, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Ubanba, are we still far? No, just a little further. Let's hurry. Just then, a strong gust of wind blew and a creepy voice resounded. Where are the rice cakes? Hearing this, Kamiyasu and Genroku were terrified. Oh no, it's here. Help us. They immediately dropped the rice cakes and fled in fear. Oh no, they ran away. Oh well, I can't carry the rice cakes alone. Ubanba had no choice. He left the rice cakes behind and went to Yamamba's house. When Yamamba saw Ubanba, she smiled with delight. Oh, you've worked hard. Actually, I gave birth to a baby yesterday, and it was hungry for rice cakes. That's why I sent it to fetch some. So, where are the rice cakes? Ubanba was shocked. The terrifying voice he had heard earlier belonged to a newborn baby. Here, here, I brought them, but they were too heavy. So I left them on the way up the mountain. Upon hearing this, Yamamba ordered the baby, Maru, go and fetch the rice cakes. In an instant, Maru, the baby, flew like the wind and returned carrying the heavy rice cakes on his own. Truly, he was Yamamba's child. Well, I guess that's it for me. As Ubamba tried to leave, Yamamba stopped him. Since you've come all this way, help me with some household chores. Oh, reluctantly, Ubamba spent the next 21 days cleaning and doing laundry at Yamamba's house. Afterward, Yamamba said, I'm sorry for keeping you for so long. As a token of gratitude, I'll give you this. Yamamba gave Ubanba a beautiful piece of cloth. Here, Maru, take Ubanba back to the village. As instructed, Maru effortlessly carried Ubanba and swiftly brought him back to the village. Now, when Ubanba returned to the village, everyone thought he had died and was in the middle of a funeral. Ubanba, you're alive, of course, I won't die so easily. But more importantly, I received a gift from Yamamba. Ubanba shared the cloth from Yamamba with the villagers. However, no matter how much they cut it, the cloth returned to its original length by the next morning. It was a mysterious cloth. From then on, the cloth became a famous local product in the village, and everyone sold it, leading a happy life. And that is the end of the story.